Hello everyone, this is Riley. Earlier I was making such kind of animation and posted a short demonstration. People asked for a tutorial, so here we are. Uh, in this tutorial, I will make basically everything procedural, even more procedural than I initially made them. So let's go. So firstly, let's import our object. So if I'm going to edit and preference, there is an add-on which is called import images planes. So if you don't, if you didn't activate that, please activate that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to the file and the import images planes. And I've already made a lot of images, basically image sequence, and you just select all of them and import images planes. Then I have about the 45 objects and each of them will have a different text image texture. Uh, the reason I'm doing this thing is because uh, if you try to change the materials uh, to the sequence, uh, where is the sequence? Yeah, uh, if you change the single image into sequence, you you don't have ability to actually animate uh, to um, edit all these offset and the frames and the start frames. Uh, it means um, either you play that as a image sequence or a single object will only be able to have a single image shown. So that's why I have to use import image method to give different materials a sequence, an element of the sequence. And for this image sequence, I think it's possible, or it's kind of easy to just either do this in Photoshop or After Effects. Personally, I do this in After Effects because you can type the expression and many other things. It's very easy to export as well. So the next step is to actually working with a single individual plane. Uh, for convenience, I'm just going to shift the deduplicate that, and I'm going to move out the same collection, and I'm going to disable the original collection so that I only see one of them. Uh, I would like to do the simple deform, uh, and the two, before I deform anything, I need to sim, uh, subdivide that for several times, so that it can it have an, enough polygons to deform itself. So let's uh, just choose a simple deform. If I bend these objects, and you can see there is nothing works. Uh, it's not bending itself. Even if we apply the subdivision surfaces, this is because the transformation here is actually 90 degree on X. Uh, it, this is actually somehow related to the way simple deform works. It's actually too hard to describe, but what I would say, when such kind of situation occurs, you just apply the all transform. And then make sure the, um, the kind of Z axis is always facing upwards, something like that. So as you can see, now we have a deformed pages, but it's not a deforming the way I wish. Uh, and before we apply a further change, I would like to just roughly talk about the way simple deform works. So now you can see the axis of the origin Z is facing upwards. And uh, if I just uh, try to move this Z, and uh, if I move the origin, you can see how the deform um, is changed as well. So basically the simple deform is working based on the position of its origin and uh, its transformation. So if you rotate that, it will also be affected. Uh, however, there is no real actual way to change the or data of origin numerically. So you either just use these methods as what we're doing but this is not really procedural with the transform data. So you cannot really do this. Um, but still, I just would like to get an idea that the edges on the top. And then I will put everything selection to cursor. So there's another way to actually edit the origin of these objects procedurally. And that's why there is an option to make the origin to an object. So let's state the, let's uh, make it just an empty plane axis. And if we 
change the object into this plane axis. So now you can see if we change the axis and that's how it will affect our object. And if we rotate this axis, the rotation will also be affected. And this is actually super nice, super wonderful. So if you paint that to one of the corner, then now we have a kind of very nicely deformed pages, like blowing that up. But it also means if we are going to duplicate this object, we are not only need to duplicate these pages, but also duplicate this empty. Otherwise, if I just uh, shift the duplicate this object, if I just uh, move that, you can see this page has been deformed largely because the origin stays as the same empty. But this is not what we want. We want this empty or this page's parent to be empty or empty parent to the pages. I think either way works or only one way works. But anyway, I haven't tried that. But I'm going to do everything with the nodes, so I, I don't think it actually really matters because it's procedural. So let's go to the animation node. And I'm going to use the distributed matrices and object instancer, object matrix output. Uh, maybe you have watched my last tutorial talking about uh, there are basically two ways to instance the object. The reason I use this instancer method in this particular case uh, is because I want each of these objects to, have to be independent so that they can have a different material. And I'm going to copy this object the instancer. Uh, the other one, it does not really matter if it actually copies the full object because it's going to be the empty. So the top one, which copies the full object, will be the pages. So each children contains the modifier, sub including subdivision surfaces and simple deform. And I'm going to put the object into objects and duplicate that. For the empty, I'm going to duplicate the same amount of time and the matrices to both of them. So now what you can see is our pages tend to be very weird. This is because for each of these pages, they go to the same um, object as their origin, which is the most initial empty that we have. Uh, this is something I've shown you earlier, of course. Next thing I'm going to do is um, objects attributes output. So I'm going to fix this, the issue of this empty. Uh, let's firstly did make the x division 1 and you can increase the y division as you want. And to fix these empty issues, uh, this is quite actually easy to do. Uh, firstly, uh, we have this object attribute output. So this node will go into this object the data, including its modifier or maybe other things like uh, auto smooth. So basically, many data which you don't usually reach from the matrix or transform, something like that. So in this simple deform, I'm going to right click and copy data path, and I'm going to paste the data path. So now if I put the object into the object, now you can see all this object goes to be normal. But the reason is because I'm not putting, I eliminated all the objects within the selection. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to activate these multiple values and put our empties into these values. So each object now sequentially has been assigned their corresponding empties. And this is basically how it works. Next thing I'm going to do is to offset the actual matrices of our empties because now the matrices has been reset. So our empties lost its initial transformation that has been assigned to uh, assigned by me at most the beginning. In this case, I'm just going to use the offset the matrices. I'm going to put the locations a little bit higher. No, actually, the location just stays at the place. Uh, and move that, rotate, maybe Y rotate a little bit. So I think this is it. And Z a little bit down. X. So you can deal with all these things by yourself in the free times. Next thing I'm going to, I probably will change that into step. And I'm going to crush this distance. 
So now we have all these pages. The only issue is that uh, our pages might overlap. Oh no, it does not overlap. So something like that. Yes, uh, the pages should be also very thin. So let's even crush that further. You can even add a solidify modifier to one of them. So let's. It's possible that you add a solidify modifier to the parent. And you have to update the all the information. So let's copy four object again. So that now each object has a solidify modifier. Uh, but the 0 0.1 might 0 0.01 might be too thick for them. But you can also procedurally change all the data using the same methods. Right click, copy data pass, paste, and go to the objects. I'm going to use a single float input to the values to control them. And you can name that 0 0.005 so it becomes enough saying or 0 0.001 something like that uh, it's i'm just not making a kind of demonstration but you don't necessarily it's a free for your choices but it might be better if this thickness has been linked to the y distance so that it becomes very easy to work with Okay, after this moment, we have everything basically procedural. Uh, next thing I would like to do is to deal with the, the animation. The animation contains two parts which are very important. Uh, one part is the deformation of pages, and the second part is the translation of these pages. Um, both of them very likely will use the same form. So let's just uh, try to do that. So I'm going to converge these two node, uh, two pathways at upstream, and I'm going to. So first they make the kind of translation. So let's do the x, y, and move the upwards. So now everything moves because we the form is goes from zero to one. And then I'm going to use object controller for uh, and change the type to direction. And I'm going to use the controller. The controller is just an, an empty object. Actually, it does not matter with what this object is. This can be any object, and its uh, its name is also not restricted to controller. But the whole point is that if I go uh, hit the M panels. And it goes to node tree. You can see I always hit this auto execution um, off. There's a reason for that, and I have made a tutorial like a two animate animation nodes discussing why doing all these kind of things. Uh, if you are not, not sure about what I'm actually doing, you either just go through that tutorial or just follow what I'm doing. Make a collection which is called control and type in the location scale rotation ruler. And so on and so forth. If I put a controller in and change the type to Y, because I'm going to move on Y axis, you can see by moving on Y axis, when the object is within the fourth, then this object will be moved. But uh, all this object has been moved instead of one. Although you can see uh, there is a difference, like uh, although uh, initially their, their interval is kind of very small, but as the object moves closer, their, their interval goes larger because they distinguish. But the distinguish is not very obvious enough, the reason is our fault is actually too large. So what you need to do is to actually scale down this fault and you can see, and you have to scale down more and more until you finally reach a point where it has been distinguished. Also what you can potentially do is just uh, to scale that up a little bit so that it's more distinguished. So you either scale down your controller or scale up the, the interval between pages. This is kind of idea. So you can tweak all this value by yourself. Uh, a thing, however, is that I don't actually like this form to be uh, looks too small to me. So what I'm going to do here is uh, it's just a kind of uh, more simple dumb trick. Instead of using the object controller for, I'm going to use the directional for. They are actually the same. So the object controller for in the directional mode is just a directional for. 
they are actually the same. Um, re they are really the same. And I'm going to use the object transform input to control the location of this directional force. So the size have its own values instead of being regulated by the size of our size of our object. And if you can, you can turn this size to be down. So that's you just uh, I personally think this is a good idea. At least I see my controller clear enough. And basically this is something good to go. And you can tweak all these values. But I don't want to spend too much time on this. So the second thing is about actually the, the deformation of our pages. So initially they should stay as they are. So what we're going to do here uh, is actually basically the same thing using the object attribute output. So I have this simple deform, the angle. So right click, copy data path. And the duplicate and attributes copy the angles. And now I have to define the values. So it's very important that we input a float. So let's just see how a float will actually affect that. Uh, just to remind you, it basically works in the same way as you see. But the difference is that um, if you input a float, it's actually using the uh, using the radius instead of a degree. Uh, I think a radius two pi equals to three hundred sixty degree, and the one pi means um, one pi means um, one hundred eighty, something like that. But this is definitely another story. What I would like to say is that I'm going to evaluate for and we're going to use the the most original no matrices. Change the type into trans uh, formation matrix and use the directional fold so that is now you know why I'm using the most initial matrices because these two should be at the same level because both of them will be affected by this fall. And I'm going to set a map range. The evaluate fall basically usually range from 0 to 1. It means how much percentage it will uh, the object is in the fall. Of. So from zero to one hundred percent, and the output maximum is actually that you will see later. So let's activate multiple values. Put the values in. So now it does not really change anything. Let's just uh, give values. So now you basically see there is a gradation of how these pages has been moved. And the rest is just about tweaking the values of all these pages so that it's animated more smoothly. And it's also possible, if you think this animation is actually too sharp, it's also possible just to tweaking the values a little bit, tweaking the size a little bit higher. But these are another story. So the last thing I would like to do before we head into the materials um, is that about the if this is um, an actual setup that we are working with the calendars. So let's just simply model a very simple calendars. Select the top faces, GUI, select all 
and the shrink the size. You can see there is a actually this standard essentially has a kind of kind of a slope, but our original mesh do not have a slope. So it's possible that you just uh, use another offset matrices. And to eyeball all these values, like the rotation or other things, it's actually um, it's actually possible. So okay, let's just uh, do that. So just uh, move that up. So this is it. Um, the last thing I would like to mention is actually about the material, because if you are taking a look with what's happening right now, is all of the OSTE pages are zero. So let's take the empties away. So now you can see all of our objects are actually zero. So even if I hide the one, hide the one, hide the one, hide the one, well, all of them are actually zero. So the question is, how can we actually get a different materials on each of them? There is essentially billions ways to do so. And literally billions ways. Um, I can even think about two ways. Oh, by the way, I have to remind you one thing. There is a bug in EV. Uh, this is actually related to the alpha and how EV actually works. I don't want to go too much in detail about such a bug, but just be aware with such a bug that, personally speaking, I don't have a way to fix that unless you're actually switching everything into cycles. So switching the cycles is to save the words, but if you're using EV, I would say good luck. Okay, so this is it. Um, about the materials, um, literally it has billions of ways. There are multiple, several ways. Just uh, to give you a hint about one of the way to do, there is a node which is called object material input. So one way of thinking is I have this collection. So let's name that as imported images. So I have a collection of imported images. So it's possible that uh, we have imported images and if I get materials of all these imported images and put each of them onto my instance the object, then they will be sequenced. So this is one way to do that. Another way is just to switch all of my children objects to each object within the imported images. So both of the method has been so the second method I I just mentioned has been explained in my animated trunk tile tutorial in which I use the uh, object uh, uh, copy object data. So instead of using this method. Uh, I'm going to talk about the way I mentioned at the beginning, like putting materials on all of them. But uh, here also one thing I have to remind you is that this node does not receive multiple inputs, unfortunately. It means you have to generate several loops. I'm going to put a loop for this ob object. Actually, it does not matter which one you choose, actually, in this case. So I'm going to put the objects into the place. And I'm going to material list. I've actually made a tutorial um, talking about a loop. If you're not sure why we make actually use a loop for many times, uh, another thing is I probably will make a new tutorial talking about a loop because people request it, but it might take some time. That's another story. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use object material output. This also tends to be a case where it does not receive multiple inputs. <laughs> so you have to generate another loop. You just hit W and it goes to right. So now you generate a loop. Um, so now, in this case, this tends to be a little bit tricky. Uh, what I would like to say is because I want each object to receive only one materials. So I'm going to hit this iterator, take a material list, object goes to objects, and material goes to material, material list goes to material list. So now you can see each pages uh, are 
should have different material, but they don't. What? So you can see the last one is actually 34, and uh, this first one is still 34. So what's actually wrong with this setup? The the reason is that I didn't hit deep copy. So once you hit deep copy, so you start from the nine, and then you end with 34, uh, something like that. And the uh, EV bug is extremely huge in this case. So let's just hit in cycles. Ah, uh, so so now everything has been fixed. So if I hide these objects, you can see 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23. Uh, I'm not going to all of the numbers, but you, you know what's actually happening there. So, but uh, I don't think this is how calendar works. You should go from 9 to 32 uh, 34 from 9 to 34 but not 34 to 9 so let's invert a list so let's take a reverse list so now it goes from I don't I don't actually know what's happening so now we start from the 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is basically how it has been works right now. And uh, basically this is it. Um, I think up to this moment everything basically has been finished. The rest is about the kind of tiny things that I don't think it's important to actually concern. Uh, one more thing to discuss because there is also a uh, node in talking about the uh, card opening. And in such a case, I need a random material for each of them. It's, and it's actually very easy just to get uh, uh, random list elements. You just put a list into the place and set the amount. Amount should be the same as the materials we have and set the seed. So now the material has been switched and by changing the seed everything has been switched. I think this is roughly just it. Um, you can do more with all these kind of things as I said uh, repeated over and over again. But this is really all about it. I, I think this is actually not very complicated. Even if I spend a lot of time in, in explaining bullshit but uh, I think it's kind of much more straightforward than it is. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.